It is Friday, the 24th day of June 2022. Good evening, faithful viewers of My Media Prime Television. Thanks for being a part of the 6.30 p.m. edition of News coming to you live from Duala Cameroon's economic capital with me, Fon Quinta. The news starts now. The official opening ceremony of this year's Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting kickstarted this Friday. The Rwandan capital Kigali is a hub of high-profile personalities as Prince Charles, next in line to the English Tune which shared the opening ceremony. Emanuela Moni completes the story. The Emergent Africa economy guided for a grandiose ceremony this Friday, June 24, 2022. Rwanda has marked hers as the first without British colonial ties to host the Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting. Heads of states and governments of the Commonwealth member countries converged on the political capital of Rwanda, Kigali. For their 26th biennial meeting, the leaders of the 54 Commonwealth countries have come together to reaffirm common values and agree on policies to improve the lives of its 2.5 billion citizens. Prime Minister, Head of Government Joseph Diongute, who is representing President Paul Bia, was part of the 35 leaders present during the official opening. Prince Charles and Princess Camilla, who arrived Kigali on the 21st of June, graced the event with their presence, as well as numerous heads of governments. Cameroon's head of government had a busy day meeting with other high-profile personalities present in Kigali Thursday, June 23rd. He accorded audiences to the Prime Minister of Jamaica and to the Deputy Secretary General of the UN. With the official opening of this year's Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting, the Rwandan capital, Kigali, is a hub of high-profile personalities. The caliber of personalities present in the country and the logistic efforts put in play tells of an event of the highest diplomatic and organizational quality. Now Cameroon, Gabon and Equatoria Guinea have celebrated the 12th edition of Africa Frontiers Day. The representatives from the three Central African states met at Abon Minko in Cameroon's South region to discuss challenges faced at the border communities. Get details in this report. Brothers in the spirit of African Union border program are understood as instruments to promote peace and security and stands as zones to facilitate regional integration, thus serving as points of contact, reasons why it is necessary to observe Brothers Day. In this regard, Cameroon's Minister of Territorial Administration at Tanganji Paul and his Gabonese counterpart of decentralization, cohesion and local development, Michel Menge Mesome, met in the south region of Cameroon to share challenges faced at the border communities on African Frontiers Day. This is the fourth edition of uh, African border days. And uh, what I can say is that it has been a very important meeting. You have heard what the representative from Gabon, the representative from the country, and the international ruler from Cameroon, who expressed uh, satisfaction for this meeting. And at the same time, they have some issues and preoccupations. For instance, too many checkpoints, which we consider as an obstacle to trade. And uh, we know we have the normal protocol of free movement amongst the states. For three days, the Central African trio demonstrated their willingness to mutualize forces through better cooperation in resolving conflicts that may arise in the border cities of Ambam, Bitam, and Nibibayin. It's important for us to hear what are the problems, to evaluate those problems, to analyze them, and to make a comprehensive report to the head of state who manage border issues. Recently, we had an important meeting about Kabul bringing it together. Gabon had a very important delegation led by the Minister of State, the Minister of Central Organization, and the Minister of Foreign Affairs. We had another meeting with Central Africa with three members of Congress just to discuss about border issues. What are the preparations about border issues? What are the challenges? What are the issues? And when you put all the difficulties together, we see that there is a need to address this issue. Irregular checkpoints on major highways was one of the issues discussed during this year's edition of African Borders Day.
The celebration of this day in Abang Minku was also an opportunity to portray the socio-economic development of border zones, all thanks to transborder cooperation between Cameroon and neighboring countries, while exhibition stands were equally visited and attestations awarded to locals who exhibited their products. Now some 40 youth leaders drawn from northern regions of Cameroon are currently being drilled on good governance and democracy. This is in a workshop organized by the Network for Solidarity, Empowerment and Transformation for All Nuseta. Kathleen Ekongwi has details. The Network for Solidarity, Empowerment and Transformation for All Nuseta is a private non-profit association created in July 2013 in Cameroon to strengthen youth and institutional capacities and actively engage communities in initiatives that will improve social well-being. The focus of this second semester of New CETA 2022 is on democracy and good governance, as it is strongly believed that a transformed society starts from a transformed and informed mind. Forty youth leaders across the ten regions of Cameroon are once more gathered to learn from the extensive experiences of the amazing cast of speakers. I think, first of all, uh, the opportunities have to be given to them. And that's uh, what I heard today from the representative of the ministry. There are opportunities for the young generation also to participate in political life. And what I also made clear today, uh, governing, participating in a democracy means assuming responsibility. So the youth and all the participants of a democracy have to assume responsibility. According to the executive director of New CETA, democracy in Cameroon is facing a lot of problems as he aligns. I think um, if you look at democracy around the world today, it's really facing a, a couple of problems in terms of uh, what we're witnessing, the democratic decline. Um, and it's due to different uh, factors that we can already see, lots of inequality in the world. Um, there are so many, uh, the gap between the rich and the poor is quite uh, wide. And so when people accumulate so much wealth, sometimes it tends to leverage political outcomes. And so very often poor people will feel that they don't really have a stake in participatory democracy and as their needs are often overlooked. So that is one of the challenges that makes for popular participation, which is a core element of democracy, to not really be, be, be seen in our society today. The training course content and setting will facilitate mutual understanding of key concepts on youth participation in fostering democratic governance, as well as facilitating intercultural learning and experience sharing amongst youths from diverse Cameroonian cultures. Over in the southwest region, the town of Ibe can now boast of the tallest building west of the Mungu, known as Gilga Tower. The inauguration ceremony took place recently in Limbe in the presence of administrative, religious and local authorities. Get full details with Kuma Onui. Going by the president and CEO Eric Ikwacho, the building known as the Gilgal Tua, is named after the Gilgal city in Israel, which signifies a city of holiness and rest. Speaking during the inaugural ceremony, the CEO of the Gilgal Tua, in his technical presentation, said the building has a penthouse, luxurious guest apartments, furnished offices, a high-tech multilingual conference room, a chapel, a restaurant, a bar room, a rica, named after his late daughter, who passed on to eternity in 2020 amongst several facilities. Eric Equacho, CEO of the Gilgal Toa, said that his vision is to create a world-class luxurious living standard for his clients as they will be reminded of the holy city of Gilgal in Israel which signifies a place of rest and refreshment. I must also say that I've spent a good portion of my life with my family in the United States of America. Now, some wonder why you chose to invest in Limbe. Why not over there? The answer is simple, home the home. you can fall bush as they say it doesn't yield anything if you don't come back home 
to show where your heart belongs. Our heart belongs here in this country, in this nation, in this city. That's why we invest here in Limbe. He added that he decided to invest in Limbe because the opportunities are enormous and for the fact that Limbe is a historic city plenty of touristic potentials. He used the occasion to call on other Cameroonians home and abroad to invest in their country and equally pleaded with the government to create a business-friendly environment for investors as it will not only boost the socio-economic potential of the nation but will equally create employment opportunities. In his welcome address, the Limbe City Mayor Paul Efumbe Lisumbe Ngalembole congratulated the CEO and president of the Gilgal Tua for building the tallest building in Limbe so far. He added that the Gilgal Tua is not just a building but a monument in the city of Limbe which epitomizes development and growth of the city. The Gilgal Tua has come to give a new facelift to the entire landscape of the municipality. These are types of building which the cities City Council is encouraging other investors to implant in our city. Ladies and gentlemen, permit me at this junction to congratulate a special friend and a partner of our municipality, a very dynamic, innovative, and God-fearing, blessed president, executive officer, chief executive officer of Egal Paul, Mr. Eric Iguanchu. The much admired 14 story Gilgal Toa takes the city of Limbe 10 grades higher in Cameroon's hospitality industry since it is the tallest building outside Yaoundé and Douala. The inaugural ceremony was graced with the presence of the senior divisional officer for FACU, Emmanuel Ngamba Ledu, the Nigerian consul for the Southwest region, His Excellency Lawal Papa, the Bishop of Boya Diocese. Lordship Bishop P.P. Michael, local administrative and political authorities, as well as a cross section of business and economic operators from home and abroad. Now, for the ECAS announced a distribution of 1.2 billion francs CFA to the first 500 cocoa and coffee producers. The announcement was made on June 22 during a press conference in Yawundi, as Nicole Tako tells us. The Development Fund of the Cocoa and Coffee Sector has announced the supply and distribution of its first beneficiaries. This announcement was made during a press conference held on the 22nd of June in Yaoundé. The administrator of FADEC, Samuel Donatien Nengwe, said that the first 500 cocoa and coffee producers will benefit from input purchase vouchers worth 1.2 billion CFA francs per beneficiary as from June 24. And the launching ceremony of these first subsidies will take place in the production basin in Melong, in the littoral region of the country. He goes further to say the development of the producer's window is being carried out through a database of cocoa and coffee producers in Cameroon, and the database contains information on the identity of producers, the draw referencing of plots, the quantitative state of the orchard, and age of plants. He continues to say, in order to trigger the subsidy, there is a need of a smartphone to download and install the application Producer Gateway. This application available on Google Play Store will allow the producers to carry out all transactions online, including identification, obtaining subsidies, geolocating plots, and ordering inputs. The Gochet is open to all producers subject to the double condition of being able to co-finance the agricultural investment and to be connected to the digital technology. The government's objective is to increase national cocoa production to 640,000 tons by 2030 compared to 257,151 tons in the 2019-2022 session. Coffee, on the other hand, targeted production is 160,000 tons compared to 22,000 tons currently.
The Vice Chancellor of the University of Boye has called on newly appointed to continue contributing to the protection and consolidation of the University of Boya. Professor Ngomo Horas Manga was speaking at a university campus yesterday during the installation ceremony of some school personnel as Southwest correspondent Emanuela C. with details. As the Vice Chancellor in charge of research and cooperation with the business. Well, I install you as the deputy vice chancellor in charge of internal and evaluation. Congratulations. Officially installing the two deputy vice chancellors and two directors of some departments of the University of Boya, the vice chancellor of the university, Professor Ngomu Hores Manga, has called on the newly appointees to reinforce the goals of the university while congratulating those leaving their positions for other duties. In an event which took place in Boya yesterday, family members, friends, colleagues and relatives were all present to congratulate the newly appointees as they were installed. The two deputy vice chancellors in charge of research and cooperation with the business world and in charge of internal control and evaluation were given a hand of welcome by the vice chancellor. <laughs> After going through their portfolios, they were presented to the population to effectively take their positions and start work. To see one of their sons, in the person of Associate Professor Kinsley Ngangeliunga, be appointed by the President of the Republic, Paul Bia, traditional rulers in Boya came out in their numbers to support him. As family members and friends exchange flowers, hawks and handshakes, it should be noted that the decree appointing these personalities of the University of Boya was signed and published on June 17, 2022. Now the scarcity of jobs remain one of the reasons why many Cameroonian youths are beginning to embrace agriculture, thus heading to the head of state's message addressed to the youth in 2016. In this report, Dolingan this shares the story of a master's degree holder whose journey is a source of inspiration for many. Her report. February 11, 2016, during his address to the youths, President Paul Beer urged these masses to grasp the opportunities offered by the agricultural sector in Cameroon. In an environment marked by scarcity of jobs, these youths have answered the call six years later, focusing on aquaculture and shifting cultivation. Teofil Benjika, is a master's degree holder in project management and is the brain behind this drive. After my studies in the university, I've always loved to work on my own, not only depending on the government or other enterprises for the employment. So I asked myself, what can I do that can help me and help other people? Why not employ other youths to work with me? So I did an analysis and I discovered that the agricultural sector could be the best for me. Besides the need to fight unemployment, Tophil says the biggest task was to decipher what genre of agricultural practice he could delve into. I saw that fish farming could be something good for me, so I engaged myself into fish farming. Conceiving a project as this is one thing, implementing is another, as the master's degree holder turned agricultural entrepreneur adheres. I started my production, the first production was not really that the best because I was not yet an expert in the field and I faced a lot of challenges. But why the choice for diversity? The vegetable in particular is a basic commodity which is highly demanded in the market, but the supply is very limited. Talking about profits, today, Theophil and team can boast of a 1.5 million profit revenue made just from the fishery sector, while the vegetable sector is estimated to be yielding an average of 400,000 profit margin so far and now a word for the youths. Let's not only depend on the government, like the president said, 
it is really a very profitable sector. Born from an ideological conception, Theophil and Pierce are just a few conscious Cameroonians hearkening to the call of emergence while pursuing further academic qualifications. Now the challenges faced by some orphans are countless, but things can turn around if these kids are taken care of. In this report, Kalelum visited an orphanage in Duala, Cameroon's economic capital, where a pastor is struggling to change the stories of these kids. Her report. Here we are at the Trinity Orphanage in Douala. The rains are heavy, but despite this heavy downpour, nothing could stop us from coming to see these great kids. Yes, unprivileged kids faced with unforeseen circumstances, predicaments of losing both parents or one parent being abandoned to their fate. Roaming the streets of Douala, pessimistic, pondering why their own lives were meant this way. Yes, intelligent, talented kid, the future of Cameroon. The good news is a humanitarian in the person of Pastor Yengua Odette stretches a hand of help and love. What's prompted her? From my own real life story, I grew up partly an orphan too, lost my father when I was 14. Life wasn't the same. I had to stop going to school. Having what to eat wasn't easy. But by God's grace, someone helped me to go back to school. And today I'm a graduate from the university. It is at the university that going through all what I went through, I have a long story which I'm, I might not be able to share today. Into a depression, I may encounter somebody who gave me hope, made me to understand that God loves me. I introduced myself as pastor today because I learned to know about God, work with him. And it's in the process of that that I went through the Bible training school. And this is where I learned what it means to live, why I'm here, and my mission on earth. You think it's easy? Oh no, it's not. Some of these children when picked up from the street were already affected with moral decadence, indulging in crimes. Most are juvenile delicate. But change is evident since the only constant on earth is change. But the space is small, so we have a problem of space. And of course daily we have a problem of food. Most people when they come to the orphanage they bring us rice. But children will not eat rice every day. Rice is good. It's, it's good. Uh, spaghetti, all of that stuff. But you have to always have finances on you to be able to buy, get them fruits, vegetables, other things so that they can have a balanced diet. So we have challenges in that area too. Medically also, the children need to be, they, you know, their health is our priority. Sometimes we have to take them to the hospital. We have to treat them. We have a phase eight. Uh, we need some medications at home. But if they have to go to the hospital, buy drugs, all of that, it's a need. And then uh, the, the, another very challenging area is their school fees. Treating the orphans, giving them food, sending them to school, and meeting their needs. There's a message that we want to pass across. There's an awareness that we need to create for you listening to me to know that it is not just my responsibility. Not everybody can have the courage to create and to start up an orphanage. But you have something that you can offer. You have something that you can give, morally, financially, materially. Sometimes you just need to, to visit an orphanage, even if you don't have something. Your presence to us is precious. You, are, you will at least see the kids, you will know their needs, you will know what is happening. And you, then when you go, if God, as God blesses you, you will know exactly how you can support the orphanage. Should those whom God has blessed feast alone, when we have the future of Cameroon here, lucky, visit an orphanage today, and save a child. We all need somebody. On our health segment, we thought preterm birth and pregnancy and global statistics show that over 15 million babies are born prematurely. Details in the following report with Bokengo Worthy. Occurring mostly at the 37th week of pregnancy, preterm birth is one of the leading causes of infant mortality worldwide. A premature baby is any baby born before 37 weeks of pregnancy. Globally, prematurity is one of the leading causes of death in children under the age of five. Drug abuse, excessive alcohol intake, smoking during pregnancy and many more are some risk factors and causes for premature birth, including Multiple pregnancy means you're carrying either twins or triplets. Another risk factor is chronic medical condition. 
chronic medical conditions such as diabetes and high blood pressure, we have pre a previous preterm labor that if you have had a preterm labor before, you are at risk of another preterm labor. We have infections, we have the use of illegal drugs such as cocaine, alcohol abuse, the alcohol, taking alcohol in pregnancy. It should be borne in mind that the health hazards and complication of preterm birth in babies may need on one. Vital organs such as the brain, the lungs and the liver are still developing up till the end of pregnancy, which means Giving birth to a baby before the 37 weeks, these organs are very underdeveloped. Now, these children come with complications like respiratory problems. Yes, because the lungs still lack the surfactants and they are poorly developed. Now, we also have problems with maintaining a stable body temperature because they have low body fat, be skinny. Now, they also have joint, they are predisposed to join this because of prematurity of the liver, they are more susceptible to infections because their immune system is very weak. They also usually have anemia and other many complications. Mind you, most of premature babies only survive the first few days of birth and those who survive at the end end up with long-term disabilities such as behavioral problems, learning problems, vision problems and even hearing problems. Nonetheless, this complication can be fully prevented and avoided. Preconception care, that's going for a medical checkup before you get pregnant so we can rule out those chronic medical conditions such as diabetes and high blood pressure that predisposes you to having a premature level and treat them. Infections should be treated. Now, when you start your clinic, or your antenatals, make sure you are always there for your antenatals. Ch uh, change your lifestyle, eat healthy diet, avoid the use of drugs, cocaine, alcohol. Because they are born before they are ready, all preterm babies need extra care, love, and boarding times like exclusive breastfeeding for their growth and smooth development. A new H United Club Duwala has organized a football tournament and cultural jamboree aimed at bringing together sons and daughters of the Northwest region. During a press conference held yesterday, the organizers disclosed that the tournament will see the participation of all seven divisions of the Northwest region. Join Gong with details. The Northwest region of Cameroon has always been known as a land of peace, love, and unity. However, within the last couple of years, the region has been affected with intertribal differences and the ongoing socio-political crisis. In a bid to revive this once happy spirit, the New Age Northwest Football Tournament and Cultural Jamboree has been organized in Douala, which will bring together sons and daughters of the Northwest region. One of the principal objectives of the tournament is to erase existing tribal differences, promote love, peace and unity. But on some days, you uh, reach Northwest tournaments and the culture jamboree. Like I said earlier, it's to bring joy to the heart of the people, it's to bring peace to the heart of the people, it's to see that the Northwest, all together, all the seven divisions could come together as one and erase, first of all, the tribal uh, conflicts. This initiative to bring Northwesterners together in a, a, you know, a soccer fiesta and a cultural jamboree is to a kind of revitalize the spirit of optimism that after rain comes on, that on every dark cloud there is a, sl a sliver lining and that at the end of this initiative we do believe that the powers that be will see reason to put an end to this armed conflict. The New Age Northwest Football Tournament equally aims at celebrating the rich cultural heritage of the Northwest region. We want to see how we can come together as one people and project our culture. Let it go beyond the world, as it has always. You know, we talk about folk in the Northwest and we have so many other things from the Northwest that people can discover.
The tournament kicks off with an opening match at the Reunification Stadium Annex, Bepanda Dwala, on Sunday, July 10, 2022, with the participation of all seven divisions of the Northwest region. We've come to the end of today's edition of Prime News on my media, Prime Television. Coming up just after the news is Prime Eye with Kum Leonard and his team. My name is Fon Queen. To have a blessed weekend in the company of more programs on the African Eye. Good night. What we are observing with our MPs today, people think that an MP's role is to come and do micro project grants. 